All right, welcome back, Benny. We are We're back. back. Now, now a little cave. Exactly. It's uh, it's Brian and Ben from Elvis Monroe. This is a story so far. And shout out to Rock Rage Radio, all the listeners out there. Um, shout out to our label, Curtain Call Records. This is our way of telling the stories like we were so used to. We're used to sit, standing on stage and telling stories uh, about how these songs come about, where they come from, and th- just this journey that you and I have been on for, what is it, 11 years now? 12 years. 12. 12, yeah. Time flies when you have Dang! Time. It's cool, yeah. actually, because when you do it all the time, you kind of do it and you move on and, you know... the. Every night the songs have a life of their own. Yeah. It, you know, depending on the audience, maybe some audiences like it, maybe some don't. Haven't had too many of those, thank God. <laughs> but um, the songs mean things for me, speaking yeah. for me, they're, they're different every single night. And that's the beauty of the live music thing. But it's a stamp, a moment in time when we write the songs that doing this has taken me back to why we The root of it, it, where it's yeah. at, and, and exactly. Also, the fun of doing it like yeah. why why did we start down this journey anyway why did we put 12 years of our lives into doing this like right. when you're doing it all the time you just kind of do it and really think about it and we haven't got to do this for way too long so doing this again it, it reminds me of why and in the hustle and bustle of the everyday to press pause and come in and and talk about specifically we're talking about a song called rewind right tonight which is very ironic because we're sitting here talking about, about going re- back exactly in that's, time it's my exact it, point man um yeah taking us back is really cool really, yeah really cool well what's and you know what's really crazy uh, in this time when we started elvis monroe i was going through something and i was going through a breakup right and this is how i was dealing with it and somebody had said to me and um that breakup sometimes you have to treat it like like that person has died moved on gotta let it go and you gotta grow and move on you learn from it so that was my approach and we were i had i was in the studio um uh, working on a song called uh, breath of time with jay rustin yeah. in my band paperback here at the time and you were in lifehouse and you're like i can't play on that song because the chord progression is way too close to a song that you to, had out on the radio first time exactly yeah. which first time I, uh, yeah it's and, and what's nuts is like um chris who came up with that he didn't even know he had no he's just walking around just noodling right but it was hey, way chris, i know you just me <laughs> and you just wanted to be like me so it was one of those things where um we're in the studio and so todd berman mm-hmm. says I'll, I'll play i'll play acoustic guitar on the track for you and so he comes in and plays acoustic guitar on that song and um and he actually wrote the bridge of that song with me so he was in the next room and we're in oh, i can't remember pasadena at the at the fire station firehouse fire stations heavy, yeah, yeah. He's and playing the piano right exactly so he's sitting there playing the piano and i can hear it through the glass and this melody hits me and I walk in and I said, you know, what, what is that? And he goes, oh, I've had this like six or seven years and just never done anything with it. And I'm like, so can I try something? And I started singing this melody over the top. And I didn't know where it was going yet. And he's like, I like it. You know, we'll work on it later. I got home and I was just living with this thought of like, like I said, the way what somebody said to me about dealing with it like it's past relationships you know passing on then i get uh, uh, the news that this person i knew just went at two in the morning he is going to get taco bell and he loses control of his car in the rain and he goes off into the river and he had died he drowned in his car at two in the morning like leaving his house in his pajamas, even like sweats, whatever. And his dad, I heard the news and I sent his dad a, a message and his dad hits me back and I couldn't even get through this message without crying. And so I sat down and I penned the song because now I had a real connection to loss right. and, and what he was saying to me meant so much. So it had a personal space 
to me. And it was ironic because I'm talking about Natalie, my ex, and this was her cousin that this happened to. So it was like this, uh, weird this weird intertwining kind of thing. So then I went and I, and I worked on it and wrote it with Todd, but it was close, but not that close. It wasn't close enough because I remember playing it from Ryan McMillan. We we got together and rehearsed for our very first show as Elvis Monroe yeah. at Universal. I show up and I'm in a room, guys, with world class players. I got Ben, who's in Lifehouse. You had Ryan McMillan, who was in Matchbox 20 at the time. Just watched him play to like eight or nine thousand people in yeah. in San Diego, the same place I saw you play like yeah. two months before. Right. And so. I'm in there going, this is our very first rehearsal, we're playing the songs that either you and I wrote or I wrote, brought to it, and I thought, oh, I'm sweating. I am sweating out my shirt because I'm like, I don't know that I'm good enough for these guys, but you were giving me a chance. And so on the way home, I presented it to Ryan, and Ryan's like, "That you know what, there's something there, right? And so with, when he said that, I went, Ben, Okay, can you do me a solid? And that is, can you put your magic? And can, let me ask Todd if we can add a third writer to this song and take it to the next level. Right. And I asked Todd and he goes, oh yeah, Benny, of course, let's do it. And so I remember you calling me up and you said, hey. Well, hang on. Yeah. Before you even get there, the writing process, you know, especially in a, in a we were new. We well, were well, brand we knew, new. But we, we also, I guess, we'll call it a duo. Right. Right. The writing process in the duo is very much a 50 50 thing. Right. Um, it's funny, I was thinking about this on the drive over tonight. Didn't know we could talk about it now, but I was just thinking about the process of writing songs and how we might be coming from two totally different places. You're telling a story about loss of someone in your life and then someone yeah. else, like real stories of real shitty things that have, that have happened either to you or somebody else. Um, so it's coming from a place of experience right? and having to get something out. right? Um, for me, it was nothing to do with any of that. You know what I mean? It was, you, you, I remember you sending me the piano demo. It was a piano demo. And of I was it, right. living in this cool house uh, on the half, uh, you know, on the half estate in Claremont and everyone was gone. This house is kind of like the inside of a 1980s cruise ship. It really know? was. It had no and corners in this yeah, damn it house. It's all circles. Curves and Chase, rocks. if you saw this house, it was insane, dude. It was yeah. curves and rocks and, you know, 30 foot ceilings and glass and really inspiring, you know, very ambient sounding room. And I find a lot of times sound inspires me. Oh yeah. You know? Not so much experience or, you know, it's, right. I'll pick up something and the sound will turn it into something. I've been listening to that song and I liked it, but I didn't love it. I didn't know what to do with it. And I remember I was like experimenting with the guitar. And ironically, it ended up kind of turning into what we built Elvis on. Right. Our sound. But I plugged an acoustic guitar into this giant PA that I'd set up. And I just cranked the shit out of it, you know. And I was playing and I stumbled across this little right you know this little kind of riff that i was going over and over again in a different key whole different thing I'm right like, well wait a sec if we change the feel if we add some stuff and rewrite what this is you know so i came up with this whole progression and then I called you. Right. And I played it to you over the phone, and you're like, oh my God. That's so cool. I can't wait to write to it. And I'm like, you already did. Yeah. And I went, yeah. I remember that call. Yeah. Because this was, we were so new. And it ended up being the song we opened the show with. Yeah. We opened the show with that. And it, it's on this record, which I'm really excited about. And, and the original demo was really quite. It was quite sad. It was and, sad. And, and this had I won't say sappy, just sad and, and mellow. Yeah. And um dark in a way. Right. It was. Whereas this kinda this, for me it feels like like a little bit of a celebration of moving past that point of loss. Right. Like we've all been through that, you know? That heartache and that loss of like, I don't know if I'm gonna get through it. Right. But then you cross the hump and the sun shines again and 
that sort of, once I heard the lyrics of the song, it, it even reinforced to me the feeling needed to have that, that emotion, but it also needed to kind of come from a, a sad, happy place. Right. You know no, what and I mean? It, you, you captured it and it's it's a favorite. So when you walked in today, we never know what songs we're going to do when we sit down and do this, which is great. I never and know if I'm going to remember. Them. Exactly. And that's <laughs> right. the same, you know, and it's been a and while, Chase, yeah. you get to experience this with us. So, you know, what what are you thinking, man? Like. It just, I, I love to watch you guys uh, work it out. You're just like, okay, let's run this chorus again. And I'm start, <laughs> and I'm like, He's not making mistakes, and you're not making mistakes. Yeah, you know, thanks, I love man. It. Thanks. You know what, Chase? What? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight. Damn straight. <laughs> no. So, um, shout out to Todd Berman, though. Todd, uh, it's really great. We get to bring this one to life. And yeah. uh, it, it went from a piano riff to my lyrics and melody to you doing your thing and then Jay Rustin produced this song on this record and Jay is still one of my favorite songs Jay's, to play yeah. like, oh, it rocks Ryan, Ryan came up with this killer uh, sloshy Ryan McMillan drum beat that only Ryan plays like Ryan plays and uh, yeah but it's um yeah that drum beat what Jay brought to the table it was really kind of the birth of a sound where we went in I remember telling you like extremely passionately that I wanted to make an acoustic record. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but I wanted to make an acoustic record, I think because it's what we did. Uh -huh. And it was really Sat down, right we wrote in like front this. of us. And, right. and I'd never done that before. And I liked what we were doing. Um, but we went in with Jay and we promised ourselves we had no rules and we'd just make whatever sounded cool, cool and see where it went. And right. it's pretty exciting to put this out because I know some people have heard some of these older songs you know the recorded right. versions but we really didn't get an opportunity to really push it or show many people because we were told to pull it down you know yeah, i remember that so yeah. again no rules full circle yeah we're back going to going around to tracking this new uh body of work i don't know what you call it an album or an ep just body just tracking our new tunes during the lockdown and the pandemic it came out of a necessity to just be creative and have no rules. I right. really wanted to throw everything out the window and just go in, like turn the rig on and see what came out. And I felt like that's how we started. It's That's you how know? we started. That's how we needed to approach this. Uh, you know, what's great is uh, well, uh, John, shout out to John Coons and Gigi over at Curtain Call Records because you guys actually believed in what we're doing and that we're not pigeonholed into rock, country, country rock, whatever. We're just Elvis Monroe. And in a time when you should be able to do that. You should. You, you should. It, be, because. I, it's how we feel. It's whatever we're well, feeling well, and, in the moment when we write. I, I feel like. And I can say this now because we've lived it. Like. When we, we had these amazing Colin Big City drinks with Elvis Monroe. And we got so close so many times right? where we really thought it was going to happen. It was going to be, our, you know, the thing that changed all our lives, you know. Um, I mean, it changed our lives as songwriters and friends. Right. But, you know, to be a real job and to be able to do it every day. Um, and we took the advice of a lot of people. We tried to keep everybody happy. We had to have these lanes that we didn't really fit in, you know, these islands that we, we, were, we weren't necessarily cluster of the main island we were a little island over here yeah exactly very pretty cool island to visit <laughs> pretty but, 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 but maybe far maybe, off the maybe beaten not path the two, maybe not yeah, on a little, tour group of yeah. cruise ship, <laughs> a little, not so, cool enough to yeah. to bring the people by and see us right so, so just mu and, and in the music climate today having a record deal and putting an album out all the rules have changed right. you know everyone's got everything on their phone and we're so engulfed in this Every single one of us is engulfed in this, and it's the information superhighway of everything yeah. you want to see, everything you want to hear, everything you don't want to hear, and everything you don't want to see is force-fed to you every day. Right. Um, so I don't think the rules matter anymore. As long as we're happy and making cool shit, then yeah, let's put it out. Yeah, and you know? and what Ben's talking about too is our the record to follow the story so far. Um, you know, if it had a title, it's either competing with giants or whatever, um, you know, which is fitting what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, that's the record to follow this one. And, and 
you know, again, to have a team and, and have people, have Chase, have Sticky Paw Studios, everybody involved helping us build this, grow this, you know, put water on it and sunshine. I talked about that. It's been dormant for so long. COVID just kind of shut everything down and coming out of it was just so different. We were all just struggling to try and and work and make ends meet and make things happen. And now we have this outlet. We get to do this now. And it's just, it's taking on its own new life. And you did a great job in the studio producing it. And now we just got to find a way to get it finished while we share this music with you. So yeah. do you want to play this song for Yeah, them? I want to give it a crack. I yeah, mean, let's give it a... It's been a minute since we played it, and sang it. Exactly. You know? um, so this, this song is called Rewind. Um, it's on the Story So Far album. And uh, those, those of you uh, Rock Ridge radio listeners, maybe a little light for you, but hopefully it connects to you because that's exactly what we're talking about. We, we just do what we feel, and here's one for you.
Nice, man. That's Elvis Monroe Rewind off the new record, Story So Far. Coming at you. Uh, we're dropping this January 27th. January 27th. Anywhere you get music. We're even pressing CDs, man. We're going old school or new Do school it. or whatever. But thank you again, Rock Rage Radio. <laughs> Want to take Rock Rage with you wherever you go? Download the app now for free on iTunes or Play Store. Rock Rage Radio, we are everywhere. <laughs>